this gentle yoga practice too, so um, people know for later, is great for anybody who has never practiced yoga before. Uh, it's great for people who are athletic and feeling that they're a little bit tight and just need some more range of motion. But we're gonna start by just letting that body be all the way down on the floor. Let gravity work with you so that as you lay here, whether your knees are bent or your legs are all the way straight, you feel relaxed. You maybe let your feet drift out to the side if that feels most comfortable, or if your knees are bent, you maybe let your knees drift toward each other. Whatever works there. Now as you connect with your mat, you'll feel the back of your head, your shoulders, all the way down your back, relaxed on the floor. Now for me, I hit, when my legs are straight, I feel a little arch in my back. Oh, stop it. <laughs> and then I feel my hips heavy in the floor and my legs just relaxed out to the sides. I'd like you to take your hands onto your abdomen and feel the rise and fall. Oh, my speaker is not working. Okay. Check your connection. Okay. Not sure why. It says my speaker's not working. Sorry. That's not it. Why is my speaker not working? I'm sorry, folks. I'll be right with you. I'm trying. <laughs> Hmm. Can I hope you can hear me now? I'll exp okay, good. All right. And so as you as the rise and fall of your breathing, your hands come to your belly. You can feel your in you as you inhale. Your breath fill up your hands and as you exhale, your belly kind of drifts away from your hands. I'd like you to gently release your hands from your abdomen and reach them down to your sides. They can rest next to your hips. Palms down toward the floor or palms toward the ceiling in either way. However, whatever feels most comfortable. Now together, for those of you that do not have your knees bent, you can go ahead and bend your knees, please. And if your hands are at your sides, I want you to reach them back till your biceps go past your ears onto the floor. Feeling that reach through your abdomen, through your shoulders, and then let the hands come back down next to your hips again. Take a deep breath and as you reach your hands back, maybe your knuckles touch the floor. If your arms are feeling tight and the knuckles don't quite touch the floor, that'll give you some indication of, you know, how your shoulders are feeling today. And then as your hands come back down and land next to your hips, I want you to walk your feet a little bit wider across your mat tipping your knees toward each other, and then just kind of tip side to side with your legs. Let them go back and forth, almost like windshield wipers. Keeping your breath nice and fluid.
and then we'll ease our way back to that neutral position with the feet coming right out of the hips. So we're gonna pull the right leg into your body, keeping the left knee bent and the sole of the foot on the floor. We'll hug the right leg to our bodies and then release it and hug the left. And release it, hug the right. And release it, hug the left. Keeping your breath nice and fluid, we're gonna reach that right leg into the body as well. So we have one hand on each shin or knee and just kind of rock yourself side to side. Maybe circling your knees around a little bit here, giving yourself a little back massage. Good. Now as we come to a stop, we'll cross the ankles, hanging onto the thighs. We're going to rock ourselves up to a seated position. Yeah, warming up that back. Relax those shoulders. You can feel the crown of your head going up toward the ceiling. And now as you make your way to your seated position, you might kind of get a little extra flesh out of the way here so you're nice and planted on the mat. We'll take the hands to the knees, roll those shoulders back away from your ears, and let's draw the chest forward over your ankles. Push off that right leg and circle around. I think I've given my visual about this one before. I imagine there's just that little bit of peanut butter left in the jar that's just coating the inside of the jar and you're using a spatula to scrape it around. Sometimes you just have to have that, that last little bit of peanut butter. Squeezing it out of the jar, using that circular motion to go all the way around. Now as you reach your chest and heart forward over your ankles, you can feel that low back get a little stretch there maybe into your hips a little, and the next time your heart comes forward, you just find yourself set up. Now go ahead and push off that left thigh and circle around the other way. Sounds like we might have somebody's mic on. If you do and you can turn that off I can't tell because the thumbnails are tiny but if you can check and see if that's on sometimes that'll interfere with my um, speaker so not sure if that's a problem right now just circling around Good. And then when we find our way back over the tops of those ankles again, let's walk the hands out, reaching out, let your head fall forward. Oh boy, you might be able to really feel this now as the weight of your head helps with the stretch. Some of you will be able to walk your forearms all the way out to the floor. If you can, go for it. Let the head fall forward. Check in to make sure that your eyes aren't squinting and that your jaw's not clenching. You're nice and relaxed here. Good, and then together we'll use the hands to walk ourselves back up to a nice tall seated position. Hands on your thighs, rolling your shoulders back. Now your crown of your head is up toward the ceiling and you've got this nice tall posture again. We're gonna twist through the waist, taking the left hand to the right knee, the right hand behind you like a little kickstand here. Twist through that waist. And release, going the other way. Right hand, left thigh. And again, let's do that left hand, right thigh, twisting through the waist, looking over the right shoulder. 
And one more time, a little twisting toward the left. Good, now as we come back to our center position, let's reach the right hand. It's like it kind of climbs over here, keeping the hips planted. Reach with your left arm. And again, some of you might be able to get that forearm and elbow all the way down to the floor. If you have that range of motion, go for it. We come up and over and go the other way. Reaching with that arm, yeah. And you might find that one side has much better range of motion than the other. And please don't hesitate to go faster or slower than I. Because one side may be so tight that you kind of want to hang out there for a few minutes or for a few more breaths. And one side, not so much, right? So just listen to your body and how it feels today. Good, now when we come back to that center position, let's walk the feet straight out in front of us. And now that the feet have been sort of tucked in, maybe they need a little wobble back and forth, flex and point, flex and point, and then just give a little windshield wiper movement to those legs again. And then we're gonna make our way to our all fours. Sweep those feet back behind you, hands, ending up right underneath the shoulders. Your feet folded so the tops of your feet are on the floor here. And then we're gonna shift the hips back toward the heels. Now, if your hips don't touch your heels, that's not the end of the world. It's um, some of you that'll very easily happen and some of you won't, that's okay. We're just gonna stretch out those quads. We're getting the shins and the tops of the feet are getting a really deep stretch here. Then we'll walk the hands forward and let the pelvis come toward the mat. Now you can feel that compression in your low back and your spine. And then send your hips back behind you. And feel free to explore when we go through these movements. As you come forward, maybe you can rock side to side see what kind of range of motion you have there. When you come back, maybe again, you can sort of waggle your hips side to side, see if you can feel a little bit deeper. And can you feel through that rib cage as you reach with those arms? Now walk forward again, bringing the hips toward the floor. You can see I'm really high off the mat, but some of you will be able to get your pubic bone right down to the mat. So everybody has different ranges of motion. Cats walking by. <laughs> oh, Kathy, you have your mic on. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> Walk yourself forward. Here's our last one. Send that hip side to side. Yeah, we'll see what animals come in next. Maybe it'll be my husband. <laughs> All right, when we go back, hips are gonna come back. We're gonna take your right hand over the top of your left hand. So remember our map of Michigan, right? So we're gonna reach that right hand over the top of the left one. This is our UP hand, right? And then the send that head down toward the floor. Oh, feel it through your rib cage your shoulder, oh, and your belly. Big inhale and exhale. Good, do that again. Inhale. Yeah, awesome. Now, take your gaze up, we walk over. Now your UP hand is your left hand. It goes over the top of that right one and then let your body sink down. Feel this through your armpit through your rib cage, really stretching as you inhale and exhale. You can feel that through your rib cage. Good, one more time, big in and out. Fantastic. 
All right, we're gonna walk ourselves up to a seated position. So you're on your shins and the tops of your feet. We're gonna enjoy a little stretch here. So this can be intense for some people. So I'm gonna show you the modification first. You start with your hands here and breathe, feeling your hips coming toward your feet. For those of you that feel like you want this a little deeper, you walk your hands up to your thighs. Deeper still, come all the way up, chest proud. You want it more intense, you can hinge back just a little further, reach your hands back behind you and lengthen your arms. Cutting off the blood supply here and those legs for a little bit. You'll, it'll feel amazing when we stop. <laughs> Good. Now as you reach forward, take those hands to the floor and let's unfold those feet. So now we've got the toes and ball of the foot on the floor. Yeah, oof. You can give those a little wiggle too. Get the blood circulating in there. Feel the buzz of the blood coming back in there. Now, as we take the hands to um, the tabletop position, they're gonna be directly under the shoulders and we're gonna send the hips way up to the sky. First time for our little down dog of the day. We're gonna push the feet back behind us and bend one knee at a time. Oh, that feels good today. Whew. Calves, hamstrings, all of that. And then as you push the earth away and your tailbone goes toward the sky, drawing the navel toward the sky as well. Continue breathing here. Then maybe we stop those knees from bending. We're gonna soften the knees, lift right up on the tippy toes, come down to the floor, reach back as we unfold those feet, back toward child's pose. This is a little bit more like um, between child's pose and happy puppy. So we don't let the head come all the way down toward the floor. Then as we come back to our tabletop position, curl the toes under again, down dog. Eyes toward the toes. We're gonna reach the right foot up toward the sky and then go ahead and bend that knee, looking toward your right armpit. And then as you take that knee back down, we shift the foot so it's right underneath that hip and then extend with the left leg, bending that knee, kind of looking toward the left armpit. Big stretch for that hip. Good, and as we shift it back to center, down comes that foot, we soften both knees and shift back. Taking your gaze toward the edge of your mat. You can feel your heart beating just a little bit more and your body getting warmer. Now pull yourself forward back to your table, curling the toes under again. We're just building on this flow bit by bit, right? So hands have as much weight in your fingertips as they do in the heel of your hand. Draw the navel in. Up goes the tailbone toward the sky, looking back at your toes. We're gonna lift that right leg. This time, let's just extend it back behind us. And then draw it in right underneath the body. And extend the left leg back behind us. So the knees on the floor. Right here is a nice little modified pigeon. We're gonna just Dip the chest toward that thigh. Find that healthy tension, right? And then come up. Good, then release right over the top of that thigh again. And up. Good, now as you walk the hands in front of that knee, Curl the left toes under, lifting that knee off the floor. Up we go, back to down dog. Back goes that right leg. 
Up goes the left. We're gonna draw it under the body. Hands on either side of that knee. Good, now we just slowly and with control lower that body. So some of you will feel like, oh man, I can go way deeper or less deep on this side. Just pay attention to that. Your body's giving you signals for a reason. Lift up. And slowly lower down. And up. Good, keeping that breathing fluid as you do it. Down again. Good, now as we come up, we're gonna curl the right toes under, right? So we can lift that knee, sweep that foot back. Oh, there's our down dog again. Now as we come up on the tippy tippy toes, we're gonna bend the knees deeply, place those knees to the floor, and reach the hip, hips back. Now let's together reach the hands back next to your feet and let your forehead go forward. The forehead might be on the floor or you can go sideways, whatever works for you with your head where, and then just let those shoulders shrug forward. As you do that, especially if your shoulders are kind of tight here, You'll feel those muscles kind of just relax. In your mind's eye, you can see your shoulders rounded forward. You can feel the rise and fall of your breathing and your um, abdomen against your thighs. And then we'll walk the hands up next to the knees and bring ourselves up to table. Now we do focus a lot on the hip girdle in gentle yoga because a lot of us have, you know, have really tight hips sometimes. But we, let's bring some focus to the shoulder girdle today. So for those of you that know Thread the Needle, we're gonna start with the right hand going underneath the left. So we start with our table position and we take the right hand it's almost like you, your right arm is a little bridge here and we're gonna reach that right arm underneath the left arm until the forehead can come to the floor. You can stop right here and just kind of rest your left arm against the right or you can reach up with that left hand and drape it across your low back. <coughs> Remember to stay fluid with your breathing, relaxing that right hand on the floor. If you feel any tension, maybe you open and close that fist. Just let the arm get heavy. Stretching that posterior deltoid and maybe even feeling a little twist in the waist here. As we take three deep breaths here, just in and out. Get the last of this gentle stretch for that shoulder. Now we can just slowly release that left hand if it was across your low back, placing it on the floor. We lift up, ooh wee. As that right arm comes forward, let's take our hips back toward the heels. Just kind of circle out your wrists. Feel how that right arm feels a little bit longer than your left now. Circle them out and of course we're gonna go to the other side. Hello my friend. We're back to our nice strong table. Whew. Left arm goes under the little viaduct you've created with that right arm over there, reaching it forward and again, 
Some of you will be able to rest that left shoulder right down on the floor next to your ear. You can get all the way nice and deep there. Relax that left hand. Up comes the right arm and it's gonna reach right behind that low back. If the tension there for having your right hand off the floor feels just up past comfortable to uh, you know distractingly uncomfortable or painful, just leave it on the floor. We're looking to get a deep stretch here. Uh, we never want to feel like it's so uncomfortable that it's you know might injure you. So just find that place. Relax your face. Relax the left hand that's on the floor. Hips toward the sky. You can feel your breathing against your thighs. As you inhale and exhale, hips way up in the air. Ease of those last three breaths. Let everything get nice and soft and relaxed. And then we'll slowly release that right hand, bringing it to the front of the left. Lifting yourself up, we make our way toward our table and then walk ourselves back to a seated position. Again, circling out the wrists. And if staying here, I've got my you know knees nice and close together. If sitting like this is comfortable, I'd like you to stay here. If it feels uncomfortable, you can come to this position here. So really six of one, half dozen of the other. It really is just a total, totally a preference for you. Um, where the tops of our feet are flat on the floor. I'm gonna take the hands to the heart and just create a little bit of, again, healthy tension um, between from the heel of the hands right to the tips of the fingers. We're gonna interlace the fingers and push them forward. Still working on the shoulders, we're gonna um, take the shoulder blades toward each other for a second here, just so you can feel the difference. Then really round the shoulders, pushing the palms forward and let your chin go toward your chest. And on your next deep breath, we bring them back to our little prayer position and the jaw parallel to the floor. Now, as we sweep the hands back behind us, we're gonna interlace the fingers, lengthen those arms, pushing your chest forward, pulling your shoulder blades toward each other now. Let the right ear go over toward the right shoulder. And as we come back to center, we'll let the left ear go over toward the left shoulder. And as we come back to center, let's see if we can start to lift the hands away from your tailbone and tip forward. Belly toward the thighs, forehead down, and see how high you can lift your arms. If they don't come off your low back, that is absolutely fine. Just lengthen your arms a little bit here. Just again, creating that tension. And we'll slowly let them come back down to the tailbone. Hands come right to either side of your knee and roll all the way up. Good, and then we'll shift to one hip, sweeping those feet out in front. Whew. All right, <laughs> we're leaving your shoulders alone here for a little bit. Let's get to that lower body. So now as you take those feet out from under you, 
right? Giving them a little wiggle, you can feel the blood start to circulate in there again. And we're gonna leave both legs straight out in front of us, really flexing actively the left foot. In fact, let's keep the right foot active so you can see the, what the left leg looks like first. So we'll flex the right foot and then draw the left leg into that body. <clears throat> you guys, I have a bust on this shelf and he thinks it's a guy. So if you'll just excuse me for a minute. Chapo, it's not a person. <laughs> Maybe that will keep him away. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. The, <laughs> the, the romance of the Zoom class, right? Um, so flexing that right foot toward you, you've got your left heel of your foot as high up your thigh as possible. We're gonna just tilt the body a little bit so the left hand is on the left thigh and the right hand is gonna reach out toward this foot. For those of you that have a strap, you can use a strap. If you can't reach your foot, that's totally fine. Um, grab your ankle, your calf, back of your knee, whatever works. And then just opening that chest. Find that comfortable place and breathe. Gentle pressure applied to this left thigh might be exactly what the doctor ordered, but if you want to reach with your arm, you might even be able to take those left fingers to the right toes. There's all different kinds of flexibility in this class. I know that for sure. Good, now as we rotate, we're gonna take our gaze toward the right foot. Now both hands are reaching toward that foot. If you can put your hands on the bottom of the foot, go for it. I can reach about to my ankle, so I'm gonna reach that far and let my head come down toward the knee. Remember, a micro bend in this knee at any point is absolutely fine. But for those of you that are resting your nose across your knee, that's probably not necessary, right? Now let's slowly ease up, coming up nice and tall, and we're gonna twist through our waist, taking the left hand toward the right thigh. The right hand's gonna be like a little kickstand behind us. You can look over that shoulder, feeling that stretch across your left side of your neck, maybe even in your pectoralis. And as we release, we'll bring ourselves forward, keeping your right leg right where it is. That right foot is nice and active. We're gonna shift so that the left sole of your foot is on the floor, pulling it in nice and close to your body, keeping that flex in that foot. The right hand can come up and around that knee, or you can just embrace it. Use the left hand as your kickstand. So you can see this is either here or here. Again, these, a lot of these things are just absolutely your preference. And we wanna make sure those toes are flexed in the right foot so that leg stays active while you're stretching here. Good, now as you release, that left hand comes back. We're gonna take the heels nice and close to the perineum, getting nice, nice and close. So those heels are as close as they can be toward you. You're gonna take your peace fingers to your big toes or you can hang on to your ankles or your feet and just sit up nice and tall, letting the knees drift down to the sides. Again, for some of you are much closer to the floor than I or much further away, it's neither here nor there. You can create a teeny tiny little flutter here if you like, or just kind of actively push the knees down toward the floor, but we don't want to force it. It'll be fine. Good. 
Now as you release your feet out in front, you're gonna lengthen your legs all the way. You likely don't have a dog in the way of yours. Go ahead and flex your left foot, and we're gonna do all of that on the other side. So the left foot is nice and flexed. We draw that right leg in. So now that you've seen the other, the way this looks on the other side, I hope this will be, um, you know, visually it makes sense. So we turn the body just a little. So the right hand is pressing gently on that right thigh. Then you reach out with the left hand toward the left foot. Again, those toes are active and pulling toward the shin. We just tip toward the side. Again, if gentle pressure on that left or right thigh is what you want, rather than this reach, those are your two options, or there's three options. You can actually just kind of re relax that arm away from the thigh. Anything that feels good for you that you want to do. This is about checking in with how your body feels today. I need that little bit of stretch through my waist. And then let's just adjust our visual toward that left foot, reaching our arms out toward the end of that ankle or your foot. If you can interlace your fingers around the bottom of your foot, go for it. We're just gonna draw the nose toward the knee let the head, neck, and shoulders relax. Still keeping that leg nice and active. Toes flex toward your shins. And then we slowly ease our way back up. We'll take the left hand to the right thigh, twisting through the waist, looking over your right shoulder. we come back to the center position we're going to rock that right foot so now it's planted on the floor nice and close to your body left arm goes up or remember we can wrap that hand right around that thigh just like that the right hand now is your kickstand what happens generally when you get into this position especially um, you sort of go from your back kind of being slumped down, finding that tall posture is you forget about that foot out there. So keep that nice and flexed. And you're breathing fluid. Doesn't need to be big deep breaths or anything. Just you try not to hold your breath. As we release, we'll take that arm up, make our way back to center. And now as we take the soles of the feet together, let's take them as far away from your body as they can be, but still be touching um, each other. So the soles of your feet are together. We're gonna really flatten out the back here. So a good way for me to do this, there's a few different ways. We'll do it this way today. We're gonna reach our arms up as if we have a ball in our hands. Picture this great big orange ball in your hand. You watch your hands as they go forward and out toward your feet. Now, many of you will go way beyond your feet. You can create a bind by just holding on to them, or you can create a little deeper bind by sliding your wrists under your ankles and putting your hands on the tops of your feet. Neither one is right or wrong or anything like that or better or worse. It's absolutely, totally how your body feels today. If that, if that little bind coming under your body gets you a little bit deeper back stretch, go for it. And then let the head, neck, and shoulders, again, relax. As that head comes forward, the weight of your head is stretching your neck and your back 
you're breathing. You can feel that rise and fall in your shoulders. Everything go. Beautiful. Then we'll slowly, if you were in a bind, go ahead and let those hands come out from under your feet, and then we'll use the hands to walk ourselves up to a seated position. Ooh, yeah, you probably woke up a little bit in those backs and shoulders. All right, so now we're gonna take the knees to a deep bend, toes toward the sky. And we're gonna break down a forward fold. So for super duper flexy people, this is also a really good um, one too. So stay with me. I usually do this one for athletes because a seated forward fold is really challenging for a lot of people. And people don't talk about it because it's like, well, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It kind of it is if you're really tight. So what we're gonna do is just keep those knees nice and bent, hands underneath the crease of your knee, and just tip your chest and heart toward your thighs. Now as you release your hands and you reach out toward your calves or your ankles, then you can start to walk the feet a little bit more forward. So flexi people out there, put your hands on the bottoms of your feet. That works already. Okay, then as we keep our gaze on the toes, start to lengthen your feet. So for me today, my forward fold is about a quarter of the way, right? I'm very tight today. And I'm gonna try and get all the muscles that I need to stretch to go to my seated forward fold rather than forcing it, right? Let the eyes look down toward the knees. Good, now as we release those hands, we're gonna come back up to that very deep bend again. Toes are still gonna be toward the sky. I'm gonna reach the hands up overhead. And keep that back nice and flat. We're gonna reach out toward those feet again. Feel that back flat, oh good. Now start to ease those feet away. Can they go a little further? Maybe. I got a little bit of progress today. <laughs> Now as we come all the way up, let's lengthen the legs all the way. So now with your feet flexing toward your shins and the crease of your knee down toward the mat, I'm gonna reach your arms up overhead and now find your forward fold. So for some of you, your hands will go right to the bottoms of your feet. This will be, you know, big, deep range of motion. For me, I'm feeling so victorious that my hands can get to my ankles and I'm feeling a really nice deep stretch here. Now, as your gaze goes toward your knees, maybe you bend one knee at a time. Feel that stretch in your hips. Yeah. Yikes, Rama. It's really, really tight today. Good. Now as we slowly ease our way up, let's point those toes, circle around, and then we're going to make our way all the way down to our backs. If you've been thinking about when are we getting to our backs for a long time, here we go. <laughs> your wish has been granted all the way to your back. Oh my goodness. Probably feels really good. So just circle yourself around here. Give yourself a little extra uh, back massage. And 
and then we'll hug both knees to our chests. Wrap those hands around your shins. Let's lift our head and look toward your knees. And then slowly, we'll let the head go all the way down to the floor. Taking the knees just a little bit wider from each other, you're gonna take your hands to your insides of your knees and just let your legs drift out to the side. The weight of your arms, kind of opening up in that pelvis and inside thighs. This is the fastest hour of the day, I swear. Gentle yoga. Take those knees back together. I want to embrace the right leg very, very close to your body. We're going to push the sole of your left foot toward the sky and let it slowly drift down. Maybe the heel comes all the way to the floor. Maybe it doesn't. Check in if it feels like it's really straining. Bending that knee is a perfect option. If it's extended out and it feels like it's giving you a little double stretch, then let it be there. We're going to release the right hand and just place it next to your side. It can be out shoulder height, it can be anywhere. Explore where you feel like it'll keep you feeling stable. Then we'll take the left hand and pull that right leg right over to the other side. Maybe you can just rest your hand on that knee. Some of you might feel compelled to extend that leg. And then start to explore what feels good with your head and your neck and your arm. Move the arm up and down. Look out over your right shoulder. A look toward the sky. Find that sweet spot and breathe. You can also explore bending and straightening that knee. Seeing if that does a little something for you. If you have straightened that leg, we'll go ahead and tuck it to a nice deep knee bend, shifting your weight back to that center position. Whew. Oh my goodness. Let's plant that foot to the floor, drawing the left leg in nice and close, hugging it toward your rib cage. Let's push the right sole of the foot toward the sky and let it float down. You may notice a difference from one side to the other. I definitely do. Again, remembering to bend that right knee if it feels like it's too much of a strain. How are your shoulder blades? Are they planted on the floor? Or you feel yourself crunching your shoulders up towards your ears? Let's relax. Open and close your mouth to if you find any, you know, tooth clenching or squinting. Want to be nice and relaxed here. Then we'll take the right hand to the outside of the left knee, and the left hand comes to the floor, helping you stabilize as we shift the left leg over the right side. Again, exploring what you need here. Lengthening that leg or keeping it bent. Maybe gentle pressure of your hand on that knee. Your left arm can move around. As you move it around here, you'll feel some different stretches out into your bicep or your pectoralis. If you look out over that left arm, or you look at the ceiling, or you look to the right, just remember to be a little bit more fluid, less rigid about how you're checking out, how your body feels. One side can be wildly different from the other.
So not only has my dog decided to be right in the middle of this camera, he has decided that he'll fall asleep standing. It's really nice. Oh my goodness. All right, let's bend that knee if you straighten it, shift your weight back to that center position. And then as we tuck both knees into the body, we're gonna take those knees just a little bit further away from each other and bring the heels to touching. We're gonna control this down to the floor. So I'm hanging onto my thighs till the heels come to the floor and then let your knees open up like you've opened a big book. Then the soles of your feet end up being toward each other. Let's take a moment to just close your eyes and your gaze, were your eyes to be open, would be toward the ceiling. But let's just kind of rock the head side to side, tuck the chin, lift the chin, find a place that feels very comfortable for your body. Hands are gonna rest across the belly. You can feel your rise and fall of your breathing. And as you do a body scan, check in with your shoulders. Let them be heavy into the floor. The shoulder caps relaxed away from your ears. You might feel that uh, air sort of between your mid back and your very low back. So again, the tailbone and hips are planted on the floor. And then the sides of your feet resting on the floor, knees open wide. Let everything get nice and heavy. get to our final resting pose. We're going to take our hands overhead and interlace the fingers. Let's lengthen the legs, keeping the heels nice and close to each other. So now we are as long in our body as we can be. Fingertips are as far away from your toes as they can be. Let's reach, 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 creating a bunch of tension here. Squeezing the feet together, squeezing the thighs together, squeeze through the seat. Inhale and exhale. Good. Now let's walk those hands right down next to the hips. Sliding the right heel out toward the right corner of your mat and your left heel out toward the left corner of your mat. Shift your body, feel a very relaxed position. You can rest your hands across your belly. You can reach your hands toward the ceiling. You can, you know, bend your knees if you like, letting your knees shift toward each other. As you find your final meditation pose, the most important part is that you feel comfortable.
as you begin to bring your awareness back to the room. Find small, find small movements in your hands and your fingers, your feet and your toes. And maybe just kind of wobble your legs side to side or make your way over to your favorite side and just kind of relax and check in with your body. See how it's feeling after this practice. This might be exactly where you start to check in with your to-do list for today. Or is, is my practice start to think about what I want to eat? <laughs> and then be gentle with yourself. Use your hands to help your body get up to a seated position. Taking your time. And then once you're seated, check in with that body. See how you're feeling, maybe your shoulders feel a little different. Open and close your hands. I am so, so grateful that you are all here today. It was such a nice practice. Thank you so much for your patience during my um, heavy traffic area here. <laughs> Let's warm up our hands, creating some blood flow here. We'll get them nice and warmed up. Sort of like you're planning what your day is going to be. So you got to have hot hands, right? Get them nice and warm. Bring those thumbs really nice and close to your heart. Take a big, deep cleansing inhale. An even bigger exhale. It's time you get to go out and make some really happy things happen. Be really productive or in the alternative, plan your next nap. <laughs> I'm so glad you were here. Thank you so much for coming. And I am really going to try to keep this gentle yoga class at Thursdays at 8.30. Um, if that ever has to change, I will let you know. But I just think it's a really good time of week for this, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Please come back. Um, I promise you I will put this on my YouTube channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Have a good rest of your day. Oh, you are outside? <laughs> How nice. Yeah, outside. <laughs> Yay. How nice. That's awesome. Any, any chance to get out of the three rooms of my house? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Bye. Have a great rest of your day.